Welcome to the second video. Okay, um, just now in the first video, we went through um, certain words and phrases that were that were used in a newspaper article to describe a fire. So now, how can we describe a fire realistically so that the reader, you know, um, feels like he is really seeing the fire himself? Um, it's the same actually as describing a place to the reader. You want to make the place or the fire as vivid and as lifelike as possible to the reader. So what you do is you actually use the five senses. Okay, just like to describe a place, a setting. Okay, in other words, you use um, you tell the reader what you can see, what you can smell, what you can touch, or what, and what you can hear. You can even tell the reader what you can taste. Some of you might say that, hey, but you don't eat in during a fire, right? You are like busy running for your life. How can you eat? Um, no. Taste here doesn't mean what you are eating. But you know, when you inhale a lot of smoke, when you have breathed in a lot of smoke, you actually do get an ashy taste in your mouth. But we are we are not going through um going to describe the sense of taste here because I think actually four senses are more than enough um, to give a very very detailed and vivid description in your composition okay the most important sense would be the sense of sight what is actually seen during the fire okay what comes to mind I think what comes to mind um, for most people would be the flames right so you can say actually you can actually say crimson flames engulfed remember this one we actually got it from the vocab just now engulfed the entire room do you remember this as well entire and engulfed okay or you can actually say the entire room was engulfed by crimson flames we'll do as well okay okay second one um, another way to describe the, the fire the flames you can say that the flames were like greedy tongues licking ravenously ravenously actually means hungrily yeah? ravenously actually means hungrily at everything In its path. Here we are comparing the flames to the tongues of like monsters, to the tongues of monsters. So they are like tongues licking, in other words, burning hungrily, burning up everything hungrily that stands in its path. Um okay, you can also just talk about the fire becoming you know spreading, the, the flame spreading. So you can say that, you know, after some time, the fire had spread. Becoming an inferno. Or you can say becoming a conflagration. Okay, inferno and conflagration, just um, they are just words for big fire. Okay, so if your fire had spread, if you um are, were unable to actually extinguish the fire, the fire would spread, then it will become a conflagration or an inferno. Okay, and what else? Think about it. So far, we have been describing the flames, the fire itself. What else can you see during a fire? The other thing, sometimes in fact you will see this before you see the flames. Yes, if you are sharp, you might sometimes see the smoke first. Like the um, person who raised the alarm, right? Who first raised the alarm. He saw thick, dark smoke. Billowing out of a window. This would be what the eyewitness saw. Okay. And um, the word to describe the movement of smoke would be billowing. Okay. Um, 
another way, sometimes um, another way that people would know that there is actually a fire before they actually see the flames to be by the smell actually. Okay, what do you smell? You actually smell smoke, right? You can say smell. You can okay, simple one is to say he smelled smoke. Okay, if you cannot, you know, uh, remember. But actually, there's a better way to say it. You can say he caught a whiff of something burning. Or you can say he caught a whiff of smoke. Okay, and what will happen when you actually uh, inhale too much smoke? Okay, what, what, what do you do with the smoke? You inhale it, right? You can't avoid it. So you can say inhale, breathe in. Inhale means breathe in the perilous smoke. Okay, and perilous actually means dangerous. So you breathe in the dangerous smoke. Not that you want to, but it can't be helped, okay? And when you breathe in smoke, also what is your reaction? The victim would cough. He coughed and spluttered. As the hazardous smoke choked his lungs right um, have you experienced it before when you even like I said just sometimes when someone is smoking next to you and when you breathe it in you know your nose get itchy and you start to cough okay it will, it will be a hundred times worse if you're caught in a fire and you are forced to breathe in the smoke you will be coughing and spluttering spluttering is actually a um, very very excessive co uh, coughing like <laughs> Like that, okay. That's coughing and spluttering. Okay, um, so there you have the sense of sight and the sense of smell. Okay, we'll move on to the sense of touch. Okay, this the sense of touch in this case is not talking about you um, touching the, the fire, but more of you feeling the heat of the fire. Okay, so in this case, you know, if you're actually trapped in the room when the fire is raging, you will say that, you know, the room has become as hot as a furnace or as hot as an oven, as hot as a furnace. This would be similes. Okay, and you know, sometimes if the fire is really big, you can even say, you uh, he could feel his hair being singed or scorched. That means, you know, his hair was being burnt or scorched. Now, normally, what would the victim try to do? Try to escape, right? Uh, but you realize that our gates is made of what material? Metal, yes, and metal happens to be a good conductor of heat. So you can say he tried to open the gate, but the blazing heat, blazing means burning or very hot, you know, the blazing heat seared his palm. See it actually means burnt, okay? And of course, when you have such heat on, on your palm, when you feel such heat, how does it feel? Painful, right? So you can say agony shot through him as he touched the burning gate or it could be like even the keys he was trying to get a key the burning key okay or whatever the the um character was trying to hold in order to escape 
Okay, so here you have the sense of touch. Lastly, we will go through today the sense of sound. You can actually hear fire. Fire, when it's big enough, right, it makes a sound. Next time when you watch a, a, a movie, right, you know, um, or a drama series, and there is actually a scene in the fire, pay attention. There is actually a sound made by the fire. And the words we use to describe that would be crackled. One of them is crackled. But we can say the flames... Crackled menacingly. Menacingly actually means uh, threateningly, dangerously, like it's going to harm you. Okay, menacingly here, and the sound is actually crackled. Good, good word to you to remember. Uh, um, if you have a fire compound examination, you can use this word to describe what you hear during the fire. If the fire is really big and you are trapped inside, you can even use the word raw. The fire roared like the sea in my ears. There you have it. Um, I give you the four senses. You don't have to use all the four senses to describe a fire. Um, or you, have, you don't have to use everything that's given here. That's too much. I will now say normally just select two or three um, senses, uh, one or two from each sense. And that would actually be good enough.